Well, we just landed in, in Lisbon. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we just went out from our, our place in Barrio Alto, which is where everyone's partying, even though it's Tuesday. Yeah. But um, the funniest thing and what I love is we saw immediately, we I walked past a food. police station and saw a guy pa like a guy passed out with his friends around him, which I feel like that's a good sign <laughs> in some weird way. <laughs> Portugal may be a small country, but what it lacks in size, it makes up for with its rich history, vast array of culinary dishes, and its beautiful landscape. Needless to say, it's one of the most popular destinations in Europe. Now that being said, there are a number of things you need to know before you go. Here are nine things not to do in Portugal. Number one. Don't confuse Portugal with Spain. Now this may seem super obvious to most of you, but you'd be surprised how many people go to Portugal and expect them to speak Spanish. Portugal and Spain are completely different countries with different backgrounds, customs, history, language, and it's important that you know the distinction between the two. Now most Portuguese people will speak English. Now that being said, if you run into a language barrier and you can't understand each other, it's okay to try some Spanish. Many Portuguese people will understand what you're saying. It's just important to make sure that you know that that's not their language. And I highly recommend picking up a few words or phrases in Portuguese to really help connect you to the locals. Number two, don't talk about football rivalries. Now I want to preface this by saying you definitely can talk about different clubs and matches. But if you start getting into things like rivalries, you know, Ronaldo versus Messi, Benfica versus Porto, that's where things can get a little bit tense. They take their football very seriously, and it's part of their national pride. It's best not to do anything that might upset that. Number three, don't just go to Lisbon. And this is a big one. Just because the country is small doesn't mean that there isn't a lot to see. Don't get me wrong, Lisbon is amazing. But it's important to get out of the big cities and see what real Portugal has to offer. Places like Braga in the north, one of the oldest cities in Portugal with many religious heritage sites. Or Guimarães, the birthplace of Portugal, where important battles took place that helped in the foundation of the Kingdom of Portugal in 1139. Not to mention Evora in the south of Portugal, or Pombal, located around the middle. There's really an infinite number of cities that have such amazing background, history, culture, and have their own unique spin on different foods. My point is don't just get stuck going to Algarve or Lisbon, because there's so many places to see. Number four, don't be afraid to talk to locals. Now this kind of goes without saying in every country in the world. Because no matter what country you're traveling to, it's important to connect with the people of that place. And even just being able to say thank you in Portuguese, which is obrigado, can make a huge difference. Now this is especially true in Lisbon, where immigrants make up 15% of the overall population. And because of that, you'll find a large diversity of food, culture, language, that really come together to make it an international city. The drums are epic! Oh my god. Number five. Don't assume drugs are legal. Now Portugal is famous because they were one of the first countries in the world to decriminalize all illicit substances back in 2001. And since then they saw dramatic drops in overdose deaths, HIV infections, and overall problematic drug use. Now that being said, drugs are not legal. So if you go there as a tourist and you're caught with drugs, there will still be consequences. Typically it's a fine and they confiscate it or in some extreme cases you're asked to appear before a commission to evaluate whether or not you need help. Number six, don't talk about colonial wars or the dark side of Portuguese history. 
Of course, it's important to know the background of the place that you're going to. And in the case of Portugal, it does have a really long and unique history that's important to learn about before you go. Now, of course, with any country's history, it's not all sunshine and roses. And it's good to know, but not to bring it up while you're there with the people. Number seven, don't get too drunk. Now, don't get me wrong, Portugal has a big drinking culture, from wines to craft beers to different spirits. But that being said, they don't get drunk a lot. And doing so will definitely out you as a tourist, and people may or may not judge you. So if you don't want to embarrass yourself, best to keep it to a minimum. Number eight, don't stay in a corporate Airbnb. Now I'm talking about Lisbon here, but this really applies to any major European city. Because of Lisbon's size and layout, housing isn't always easy to come by. And when big corporations buy up multiple properties and then rent them as short-term Airbnbs, it cuts out a lot of the locals and raises prices in the neighborhood to where average people can no longer afford it. So if you're renting on Airbnb, it's better if you can rent from an actual person, an actual local, than just a big business. And last but not least, number nine, make sure you enjoy Portugal. From the food, to the friendly people, to the price, to the landscapes, it all comes together to make it one of the most amazing countries to travel to. And I'm sure that you'll have a fantastic time while you're there.